Hey friends, it is Jenna, what is up? And welcome back to the Board Game Garden. Today, we're just gonna be doing a pretty chill video. Um, it is pretty late at night. I have a sweater on, I am cozy, and excited to just hang out and discuss some games, which you guys can tell by the title that we are going to be doing my top 10 games that were released in 2021, which I just recently did my first of these um, with the games that were released in 2022. Um, if you guys haven't gone and seen that yet, definitely go and check it out. It is right up here. Um, but yeah, I figured it would be fun to kind of go back from there. Um, because I just started in the content creation space within the last year, I figured it'd be fun to go back and do all of the other years. Um, Francis and I started in the board game hobby in like early 2019. So I think it'd be fun to go back and do 2021. 2020, 2019, 19, <laughs> and then maybe even further back from that as well. So if you guys are interested in seeing um, my favorite games or the games that I've played thus far um, that I really enjoy that were released in 2021, you can just keep on watching. Yes, without further ado, uh, if you guys want to see my favorite games that were released in 2021, I feel like I've already said this, but uh, just keep on watching and let's get into this video, shall we? So starting with my number 10, this is a game that I recently got probably like two months ago. I actually purchased this for myself for my birthday and I've had the opportunity to try it a few times. And funny thing actually is that I've only played this solo thus far. So this might actually have been further up if I've had a chance to play it multiplayer, but I have yet to do that. Um, but the game that I'm talking about is Meadow. Meadow is one that I have chatted about before, um, just a little bit. I haven't talked about it too, too much, but in Meadow, you are creating a meadow in front of you with cards. So you are doing a little bit of tableau building. There's this um, area of cards. I don't know exactly what it is called, but it is where you are drafting the cards. And you're going to have these little picket fence tiles that you're going to be placing in different parts around this area with the cards and wherever you place that little fence thing um, it is going to determine whether you take a card from that row or that column and then you draft that card and you put it in your hand and then on that same turn you have the opportunity to place one of the cards in your hand into your tableau and every card that you place has a like prerequisite for what has to be showing in your tableau already in order for you to place that down. Um, so for example, there might be a card that says, you need to have a bug icon in your tableau in order for you to place this card. And you would then place that card on top of that bug icon and so on and so forth. Each card gets you a um, certain amount of victory points. And you can also take your little, um, I, I'm gonna call it a pick a fence tile. You can take that and actually place it onto a campfire board um, when you have achieved certain things throughout the game. So um, specific different um, icons that you have and stuff like that. Um, and it's very fun. It's a cute little puzzle. It's very therapeutic. I've really enjoyed it solo and I'm excited to try it multiplayer because I feel like it would be a great one multiplayer as well. Francis is usually not a huge fan of drafting, but Hopefully I can get him to play this one. Um, the drafting pool is bigger than usual. So um, usually Francis doesn't like ones where you're drafting maybe from a set of like three. He's like kind of does not love or he does not love um, Calico, which you are drafting from, you know, three available tiles. And he always says that he gets his heart set on a tile and someone takes it and it makes him sad. So this one has like, I think there's like three columns um, and four or five rows. So there's quite a bit to choose from. So odds are if someone takes a card that you were looking at, there's most likely another card in that um, drafting pool that you can take instead. So um, yes, and the art in this is just, ugh, it's insane. It is gorgeous. And I have still yet to play the downstream expansion. We do have it back there and I do want to play it. So let me know if you guys want to see me play Meadow with the downstream expansion. Um, maybe Francis and I can play it together. Um, we have actually been meeting to play this together because um, my Patreon, which I always have my Patreon link down below if you guys are interested, but I asked my Patreon what game Francis and I should play next and Meadow with the downstream expansion was the winner. So we do need to play this very soon. Um, but yes, that is Meadow. Let me know if you guys wanna see that on um, the Twitch channel. Maybe we can stream with the downstream expansion, either Francis and I or just me solo. 
But yes, that is number 10, that is Meadow. Next one is a small little box and a two player only game that I've chatted about quite a bit, but that is Radlands. This is the little box here. We do have just the retail basic edition of this. Um, I have thought about maybe trying to find the super deluxe edition of Radlands because I really, really want the player mats. Both Francis and I feel like this really needs the player mats in order to help with the layout of each player's um, kind of battleground, I guess. Um, but in Radlands, you are going head to head against your opponent and you each have three camps that you are trying to protect um, so that your opponent does not destroy your three camps. And whatever player destroys their opponent's camp first, um, all three of them is the winner. And you're playing cards each turn with a small amount of water that you can um, use each turn. You only get three waters to play each turn, then you get those three waters back for the next turn. And you're playing different cards down that cost water. And then you're doing different abilities with those um, cards or protectors, I guess. Um, with that water as well to um, hurt your opponent. So it's just this great back and forth card playing, trying to destroy your opponent's camp. It is just great. The art is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but like I said, I really do want to try to get the player mats because I feel like it really needs it because it gets a little bit confusing with like the layout and stuff um, of each of the players battle areas. So Yes, that is my number nine. That is Radlands. Moving into number eight. This is one that I've played, I think I've played this two or three times so far, and again, only solo. I really need to find some more people to play board games with or something because I don't want to force Francis to play board games with me every single night. Um, but I am thankful that a lot of these games do have solo variants. I'm actually pretty sure every single one of these games that I'm talking about today can be played solo, which is like probably the reason why they're in my top 10 because every single one of these has a dedicated solo variant, um, which is awesome. Actually, aside from Radlands, but Francis really enjoys Radlands, so he's always willing to play that one with me. Um, but anyways, my number eight is da -da 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 Genotype. This is another one that I actually got for my birthday. This I got for my birthday from my parents. Um, and this is a dice drafting worker placement game. Um, it's not a dice worker placement game. There's actually two separate spots of the board. One side of the board is for worker placement. You're going to be placing these little shovels um, on different spots. And then on the second phase, you're going to be drafting these dice in order to get certain gene types. Um, and then those certain gene types allow you to place leaves onto these different pea plants. And it's kind of a little bit like order fulfilling but you're fulfilling the needs of these plants. And then once you do so, um, you get to take that plant off and um, score the victory points for that pea plant. And whoever has the most points at the end wins. And I absolutely love this like dice drafting to try to get the certain um, gene types. And you can manipulate things a little bit with placing tiles on things to make each of the dice numbers different genes in a way. And you can upgrade your little front area um, to allow you to draft more dice and to have more plants in front of you and different things like that. And it is so much fun. This is one that I feel like if I play this more, this would probably be higher up. I love the look of this game. I love the feel of this game. I love the mechanics of the dice drafting and the worker placement is just absolutely fantastic. So that is why this is my number eight. That is Genotype. Number seven is a cooperative game, which says a lot about this game because I, I like cooperative games, but it's definitely not something that I like navigate towards. No, that's not the right word. Gravitate. That is the word that I was looking for. It's not, um, cooperative games are not typically something that I gravitate towards. So, um, it, it really says a lot about this game and how much I enjoy it. Um, but that is, oh, it's very heavy. I forgot how heavy this game was. Um, my number seven is Stardew Valley the board game, which is a fantastic cooperative board game version of Stardew Valley, which both Francis and I absolutely love. And exciting news is that Francis and I actually ended up playing this two player 
on Valentine's this year. So um, it made me very happy. He enjoyed it. He seemed to enjoy it. And we do want to play it again. Unfortunately, we did lose. Um, but I think that's the reason why I enjoy this game so much is that it's a challenge and it's a challenge that I want to keep on trying to go back to and um, like successfully beat it. Um, and it's just very fun working together to try to do all these different um, grandpa's goals and the community center. It's just, oh, it's so good. There is a lot of luck with this. There is a lot of, you know, depending on the cards that you get and the tiles that come out, um, as well as the dice that you roll, all of those things. But like I said, in regards to obsession in a few videos ago, I really have started to enjoy luck in a game because it gives you that sort of challenge to work through um, and it doesn't give you that perfect information. It doesn't end up being just a race to who has the most points. It's like a really big challenge. Obviously in this one it's not because it's cooperative but um, it just gives you that good challenge and I love that and I don't want a game to be just how many points can I get, you know. I really enjoy that still but it's it's nice sometimes to just have that challenge to work through random things that come out and successfully get through those things and beat the game. So yes, that is Stardew Valley. That is my number seven. We are almost halfway through. Moving into my number six. This is another small little game, but this one is one that is similar to another game that I absolutely love, um, but it was the next um, iteration or part of this series. And that is Cartographer's Heroes. I freaking love Cartographers. Cartographers is one of my favorite flip and writes, roll and writes. Um, and I think that Cartographers Heroes just gives you more of what you love or what is loved about Cartographers. Um, what I love about Cartographers, it gives you more of that. And I just love it so, so much. It also gives you a little bit of a change with the hero cards and giving you that ability to um, kind of tackle the, um, what are they called? Ambush, ambush cards um, and kind of mitigate that in a way. So I really enjoy that. I've talked your guys' ears off about cartographers time and time again. Um, but I do want to mention that over on my Twitch channel, I really want to start going through all of the different map packs for cartographers. I don't actually know if all six of the map packs for cartographers got released in 2021, but those would also be in with Cartographers Heroes if that is the case, um, because just all that new content for cartographers has made me so happy and this game makes me so happy and that's why it is my number six. That is Cartographers, which I'm not going to explain Cartographers um, because I've explained it over and over again. I do have a full on solo review for that. Um, I'll put it up here if you guys want to go check out that if you want to know more about Cartographers, but it is a fantastic flip and draw in these different polyomino shapes into a map um, in order to get these different victory um, or different objectives throughout the game um, with all of the four seasons. So moving into my last five, the top five of 2021. The first one is the biggest box here. Um, and this can be considered, I guess, a 2022 release because I think it was released at like the end of 2021. And it actually, I don't think was like super available to everyone in 2021, but I'm including it in 2021 because I didn't include it in 2022. Um, but that is, ooh, this huge ginormous box here. That is Arc Nova. Arc Nova is a fantastic, um, it, it really does deserve the hype. It is a fantastic zoo management game where you are building your own zoo and it has this really cool mechanic that everyone talks about but basically on your turn you're picking one of five actions and that action is as strong as where it is on the like i guess it's like a conveyor belt um, it kind of goes and builds from one all the way to five when you take out a card cards move up so eventually as you you know play actions different cards move up and get stronger and I really enjoy it you're like playing these different cards down and putting animals into your zoo and then adding the enclosures into your zoo it's been a little bit since we played this um, when we first got it we played it probably three or four times and then I think I I haven't played the solo yet which I want to I really want to play Ark Nova solo I've heard the solo is 
amazing, but I love this game. The one thing that kind of threw me off at the beginning, and again, this is something that I think um, I've grown to enjoy since playing this for the first time, and that is the fact that there are a lot of cards in this game, and you cannot stick with a certain strategy um, because, you know, things might not work out the way you're planning to. Um, you might be trying to wait for a specific card to come out. Um, there might be some cards in your hand that, you know, you need a bear card in your zoo in order to play this card, and you could be waiting around for that one bear card, but that bear card's not coming out, so you can't really hold off because it's going to mess up your strategy. You kind of just have to, you know, get rid of that strategy and move on to something else um, or it's just not going to work out. So that was the one thing that I kind of had to get through with the first few plays of Arc Nova is just not sticking to a strategy and kind of going with what comes out and going with the flow um, is honestly the best strategy to do. So yes, that is Arc Nova. Um, I do want to, like I said, play the solo. So let me know if you guys would want to see Arc Nova solo over on the Twitch channel. Um, but yeah, that is my number five, Arc Nova. So moving on to number four. This is a game that I have talked about quite a bit on the channel. So I apologize for talking about it again. Um, but that is Cascadia. Cascadia has quickly become one of my comfort games. I don't know if this was in my top 10 comfort games. Um, I think I might do an updated video of that because I've gotten a lot of new comfort games and some have changed. So um, yeah, Cascadia is a fantastic puzzle game where you are drafting both a habitat tile as well as an animal token and you are placing that habitat tile into this habitat and you're trying to make different um, groups of different habitat types, I guess. There's like desert and river and mountains and different things like that. And you're going to be scoring for your largest groups of all of those different terrains. I guess that's the right word for them. Um, and then you're also going to be placing an animal token on all of these different hexagons in order to score points in different ways based off of all of the different animal cards um, that you have out. There are a bunch of different ones that you can switch up between and I recently played Cascadia with both of my parents and it just made me so so happy playing that with my parents and them enjoying it. So yes, that is Cascadia. That is my number four. All right, so moving into my top three. Two of these you guys will probably, oh maybe not. There's one that I haven't chatted about for a while but I absolutely love. Um, there's one that you guys probably already know <laughs> and then there's one that might surprise some of you and might not surprise others because this is a game I just recently got um, and I am obsessed with it already. But anyways, I'm going to stop yapping. My number three is one that I have not chatted about for a while, but one that I absolutely love and this was released in 2021 and that is Seize the Bean. Oh my goodness. This is a fantastic game and honestly, it's the type of game that I have been wanting in this hobby. A like coffee themed cafe game um, and I really am happy that it has some worker placement and some deck building um, but basically in Seize the Bean you are the owner of your own cafe and you're trying to have and run the best cafe and this also does have a solo variant which unfortunately I have not tried yet which I need to but the thing is is that over the past few months I've tried not to talk about Seize the Bean too too much because I know that it's not super available to everyone and I don't want to hype up a game if you guys are not able to get it but if you do see Seize the Bean it is a wonderful wonderful game and I do think that Quality Beast is working on another printing of Seize the Bean so hopefully it is more available very very soon but yes you're trying to run the most successful cafe so you're placing your workers on different spots of your own board to get resources or um, different food in order to serve your customers. So you're trying to gather coffee and sugar and cream, things like that. And then on the other side, you have different worker placement spots like upgrading your cafe, upgrading your um, kitchen and your products that you're serving. Um, and then you're bringing in all these customers. You have that deck building, which is going to be you flipping out customers and then having to serve them with all of the food items that you've gathered in the worker placement 
part of the game and it is just so much fun. The art in this game is fantastic and just like all of the little things, there are a ton of different um, customer groups that you can play with. Each game you're only playing with six customer groups, but the game does come with like 20 to 30 different customer groups. So it has a lot of replayability because you can switch out the different customer groups and based off of which ones you like more and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that is my number three. That is Seize the Bean. I love this game so much. Moving into my number two. This is a new one. I've played this twice and I am obsessed. And that game is Final Girl. Oh my goodness. The hype on this one is real in the solo gaming community. Um, if you guys do not know, Final Girl is a solo only game and it is putting you in the world of being, I guess, is that the right way to say it? Like you're, you're the final girl in a horror movie basically. And you are being put against different villains. Um, I do have two expansions. This is the core box. You buy the core box and then you have a bunch of different film boxes that you can purchase that are going to have two different final girl characters that you can play and then one villain and one um setting or like place so i have two of them over there so you can actually play with different final girls and different villains and then a different um place so you can really just switch it up and it is such a fun game again there's some luck in this game with dice rolling um, because on your turn you are going to be playing cards that you have in order to move and to attack and to search to get different items and you're just doing all these things with cards and then right after rolling a dice to see how successful you are with each of those cards and then after you're finished with that you're going to be purchasing cards with time um, because as you're using those cards you're going to be using time in order to use the cards but then whatever time you have left over you can purchase new cards for your next turn and then after that is the villain phase so they are going to attack you or move towards you you're also trying to protect these people and um, bring them to safety throughout the game as well and each of the games have some like different rules and stuff and different ways that things work and it is just so much fun. So that is my number two. That is Final Girl. Um, I believe this is season one, but season two just recently, um, I believe started shipping, which is very exciting. And I uh, am looking forward to possibly being able to play those ones if I can find them uh, in retail. So yes, that is my number two. That is Final Girl. And my last game and my favorite game that was released in 2021 I'm pretty sure most of you should know the game that I'm just about to show you and um, this is probably <laughs> the 15,000th time that I've showed this game on this channel and I do apologize for talking about it constantly, but that is My Man Hadrian. Hadrian's Wall was released in 2021 and this is my favorite game of all time, so it had to be my favorite game that was released in 2021. Um, this is a flip and write where you are getting different resources as well as workers and then you're going to be on your turn trying to do as much as possible on these two fantastic looking sheets um, where you're going to be using workers to fill in different tracks and once you hit certain places on all these different tracks you get more workers and more resources back so then you can use those and there's something about games where the turns, I've discovered this um, recently with a lot of like these crunchier roll and writes um, as well as I actually noticed it in Tapestry as well. But there's something about games where on your turn you are trying to do as much as possible with what you are given. There's something about that that I love. So in Hadrian's Wall, you're trying to spend all these workers and resources in order to get more back, in order to do more. And that's the same in things like Three Sisters as well as Fleet the Dice Game and all of these like chonkier roll and writes, but as well as Tapestry where you are moving up these tracks and gaining resources to then move up more tracks. It's just oh, my favorite thing ever and I love it so much. Um, but yes, that is my number one. No one was surprised. 
Um, that is Hadrian's Wall. All right, friends. So that is going to be everything for today's video. All of my favorite games that were released in 2021. Please let me know if you guys want to see more years um, and more games from each of those years. I would love to know. Leave them down in the comments. Give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Also hit that subscribe button if you are not part of the garden yet. We'd love to have you here. I seriously cannot believe. I think at this point we're at like 16.3k, which is just mind blowing to me. So if you are watching this right now and you are part of the garden already, thank you so much for the support and just being here. I love you guys so, so much. Um, I do want to mention right now at the end of this video that you guys are not going to see any videos from me next week. I am going to take next week off. Um, technically not off, but I've noticed recently I've been getting a little bit stressed that I am behind on videos. So I really want to take next week to get ahead of schedule so that I am filming things for, you know, weeks prior, if that makes sense. Um, and then also there has been a few things in my personal life that have been going on. Um, one thing that is not so great, but another thing that is really, really good. And yeah, just a lot of things happening right now. And I just want to take next week to get ahead of schedule and, um, you know, process these different things that are happening. So yes, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, hopefully you guys have a good week next week. I will mention that there is going to be a video uploaded over on my Patreon. So that is going to be something that um, if you are a Patreon, you will see that. Um, and then I will also possibly be streaming. I still haven't decided if I'm going to stream. Um, we will see, but I will most likely be streaming the Sunday of next week, just maybe not the Tuesday. So yes. Thank you guys so much always for being here and hanging out with me. I love you guys so, so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile, and I will see you guys in the next board game video. Bye, friends.